Welcome to this special report on C-Soup Radio. Now introducing award-winning investigative reporter Judd McElvain. This interview is based on the true stories of the last surviving member of a three-member CIA contract team known as the 231 Club. These three covert soldiers followed orders which sent them around the world to deliver weapons, money, train American allies, and sometimes eliminate its enemies. For the first time ever, a contract killer for the CIA speaks out about his assignments and the loyalty and love he had for his country and his team members. Now, some of the dates and names and places have been changed in order to protect uh, those who were his associates and the family members who are still alive. And his team called him Cowboy because of a nickname he picked up in an Arab country. Some people would call your partners just everyday killers. Do you consider that they're killers or they're soldiers, they're heroes for what they did for the United States? First of all, the word hero has been misused so much, it, to me it doesn't even hardly mean anything. Everybody is a hero. They, they save a cat out of a tree, they're a hero. Police officers, who I respect tremendously, and firemen, if they do something that jeopardizes their life when they don't have to, to save somebody else, to me that's a hero. Just being a police officer or being a fireman or doing any other kind of work is just somebody that's getting paid to do a job. So a hero is somebody that actually puts their life on the line. Michael and Chauncey were heroes, definitely. Were you a hero, too? That would really be lame for me to say one way or the other. You're the last member standing. I'd rather, I'd rather not even think in those terms. Okay, let's, as far uh, as myself. let's change the subject a little mm. bit. What type of equipment did you use on these assignments? I mean, we've seen in the movies uh, James Bond with uh, laser guns, laser watches. He had everything you could think of. Did, did you all have equipment like that? We wish we would have had equipment like that. Uh, sometimes we would get maybe a little help with a vehicle or something, but it, it, was, it was mainly what we could muster up ourselves. Uh, we would basically use the, uh, the Colt 45 semi-automatic, we would use rifles like the M1A. Uh, I had a favorite rifle, which was a uh, H&K 91. Of course, Michael hated it because it wasn't <laughs> an American rifle, but uh, it had a sweet sniper trigger set up on it. It was beautiful. But uh, we had to be very creative. Now, what I did, because I was utilized also for my expertise in behavior, being able to spot people, judge uh, their behavior, but uh, there were other things I did. Uh, I personally uh, took some acting classes, some lessons in uh, improv, so that I'd be more spontaneous on assignment. It may sound funny, but uh, it worked out very well. Were you surprised at what people would believe? Oh, I mean, I'm, you tell them something and they just believe it. I'm, I'm never surprised. If you approach somebody with the right suggestion, uh, it will work if you understand their behavior. For example, you can say to two women, you look beautiful today. One takes it literally and says, thank you very much. The other one picks up an inference and says, well, what was wrong with me yesterday? So by understanding some people take things literally, some people work more on what they think you're saying, that gives you information that allows you now to approach that individual in a way that they're going to be much more uh, susceptible. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak out and tell us this amazing story. I'm Judd McElvain, the troubleshooter, and you've been listening to a special report. Thank you again for listening.